Hello, I'm Natasha Foreman. Welcome to the Breaking Bread with Natasha podcast, where I share daily devotionals from my namesake blog. So you can listen on demand to spiritual messages inspired by God's love as expressed in the Bible and other religious texts. You can read along at breakingbreadwithnatasha.com or sit back and take in the word. Either way, I'm blessed to have you break bread with me. Without further delay, let's begin today's message. Welcome, Breaking Bread family. This is Natasha Foreman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's look at the book of Luke, chapter 12, line 25. The translation that I'm reading says, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Today, I will splice together some thoughts I shared previously on my NatashaForeman.com blog as they resurfaced in my mind and I know that it is not a coincidence or just some random rehash my brain is tossing about. There are some nuggets I need to explore so take a moment and join me. (laughs) Worry, stress, anxiety, fear, jealousy, envy, and impatience. Jeez. Even saying these words feels like a heavy weight to carry. They're so loaded, but never with any real substance. It's all a mirage. Our mind layers the repetitive words and phrases of whatever narrative you have chosen to marinate on and recite. Visualize layers of toppings for a huge lasagna. The more we don't acknowledge the thought and then counter it with truth, the more we begin to believe the thought to be truth and then we dwell on that thought and the layered thoughts that begin piggybacking and riding along to antagonize us. Eckhart Tolle is quoted as saying that stress is caused by being here but wanting to be there. What and where is your here compared to the there you keep thinking about and losing sleep over? As I said in my Natasha Foreman blog post, it's okay to be in a blizzard here, wishing you were in calmer and warmer climate there. It's when we try to control our minds to think entirely or mostly of there that we can get into trouble. Think about what your mind and body undergo when you obsess over things you can't control and neglect to see the information, lessons, and growth built in the now. I sat in a stress meditation session with a Buddhist monk and he said something that grabbed a hold of me and I couldn't write it down that very moment, but afterward I jotted down what I could recall and that was, the past has already happened. It's gone and can't be reclaimed or changed. The future is a dream yet to be determined. And just like our minds are impermanent, the present is an impermanent moment that is subject to change. Days later, I was listening to a Bible devotional, cover to cover, the story of the Bible, and it's by Renewed Devotionals. It's available in the YouVersion Bible app. And day 49 of the Bible plan covers the supremacy of Christ, Colossians. And the author of the plan reflected on how we pray to God, often begging for a change in our present circumstances. And instead of waiting and trusting him to intervene on our behalf, we rush to fix and control things. Then we panic when we blunder. And then we say, okay, God, I trust and wait for you. I went on to reflect that we're not willing to sit in the present. We're too busy struggling to reach the future or the impossible past. We claim we want vision, discernment, clarity, and patience, but then panic and freak out when we see what we can't control. We want the there and can't tolerate the here, so we stress and get depressed, not gaining a single hour to our lives. Author, CEO, and business mentor Darren Hardy often speaks of humans craving more, 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 always seeking bigger and better, never being satisfied with what we have. 
later regretting our decisions and then pining for a past that we can no longer have. I saw a quote from Alex L that says, when something is for you, it will bring clarity and alignment to your life, not chaos and confusion. <laughs> I also shared that quote on my other blog. <laughs> it stuck to my bones. I love it so much. As I reflected on the words, what flowed from me was this initial understanding. What is for you may disrupt your now so that you can be properly aligned but what it won't bring is chaos and confusion. When that piece pushes out your clutter and nonsense, it will fit perfectly in its rightful place, bringing you the clarity to see with clear vision, the path and the unfolding plans for your future. But if we keep holding on to the clutter of worn out, misused, and forgotten things, dead relationships, and toxic internal messaging, we stay in a state of confusion and we accept the chaos as our norm. Neither are intended for our lives. And this takes us back to today's Bible verse. Can you add a single hour to your life by worrying? Heck, you can't even add a minute to your life by worrying. Think of how many days, weeks, months, and years we have lost as depressed, angered, jealous souls. Think of how much time we have lost comparing our here to the there of the past, future, or on someone else's social media feed. We lose out on so much when we don't sit in the here and acknowledge the now and consider what we're supposed to learn see, hear, work through, or just sit still in at that moment. Meditation allows us to embrace the moments and focus on what is before us. In the now, are we taking that time to call on God for comfort, reassurance, a listening ear, guidance, or stability? Jeremiah 33, 3 teaches us that we're to call to God and he will answer us and tell us great and hidden things that we have not known. Why are we worrying about a tomorrow that is waiting when today hasn't even finished playing out all of its chess moves? Matthew 6, line 34 tells us, therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I think we worry and stress because we don't fully grasp, appreciate, accept, trust, believe, and buy into the beauty and power of our relationship with God and his son, Jesus. We claim we do, but let's be honest. If we trusted God and Jesus, then we wouldn't worry, be depressed, stressed out, popping pills, drinking this and that, and abusing our minds and bodies with toxic substances. We see a romanticized and conflicted relationship and many of us think that we're dealing with God in the ways we see storified in the books, poems, psalms, and letters that comprise the Bible. There are stories in the Old Testament that can scare the bejesus out of many people. And so we equate our hardships with God's punishment for our sins because why else would we deserve this misery unless we sinned, right? We ignore all or most of what Jesus is said to have taught the learned and the uneducated, the wealthy and the commoner. In John chapter 15, line five, Jesus is quoted as saying, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit for him. Apart from me, you can do nothing. To abide is to accept or act in accordance with a rule, decision, or recommendation. It also means to be able to tolerate something or someone. 
Similar words that the dictionary provides include obey, follow, keep to, hold to, stand, endure, and accept. Well, heck, if we aren't abiding in Jesus, we can't possibly be abiding in God, which means Jesus isn't abiding in us. And then we tell ourselves, then God can't possibly be too passionate about abiding in us. We feel undeserving because we feel guilty for not abiding. We struggle with seeing changed circumstances as God's grace and mercy. We're more inclined to think that it was our efforts or the actions of a third party interventionist. And I know that not everyone who joins me here for Breaking Bread with Natasha defines themselves as followers of Christ. There are a lot of people who join in And they aren't quite sure what they believe about God, Jesus, and other folks mentioned in the Bible. So the questions I'm about to ask you are taking this into consideration. Do you think you have a relationship with God or are you merely a creation placed here to figure figure things out with free will to do whatever and face the full weight of the consequences? Or do you think that you have a relationship with God, but it's one that you aren't fully committed to, so you carry the guilt of knowing he's waiting for you to choose him? Or do you have a healthy and strong relationship with him And you walk boldly in faith, supporting his plans for you, trusting his will in ways, and you don't waste precious moments worrying or obsessing about the future or desperately seeking the past. No matter how you answer the questions, it always comes back to your opinion about who and what he is and who and what you believe you are. The less you believe in and about yourself and your truth, the less you will believe in your relationship with him, the promises he's made and his plans for you. Psalm 145, line 18 reads, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Will you call on him in truth? Do you know what the truth is? John chapter 14, line six says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have to choose the way, the truth, and the life. We are given the choice to embrace our relationship with the Son and the Father taking in all of what I have shared in this message. What choice will you make? Will you choose to be present and aware, even uncomfortable in your moment, knowing that circumstances are subject to change in the next moment, the future? Or will you obsess over the possibilities of the future and or yearn for a past you can no longer have. Will you accept that your here is now and possibly waiting to unfold and be shaped and that there is either gone because it's in the past or it's yet to be determined because it's in the future? Will you choose mindfulness and seek out God's presence and support? Or will you choose stress, which means ignoring God and rejecting his outreach to draw you near? Hebrews chapter four, line 16 teaches us to confidently draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy 
and find grace to help in time of need. I don't know about you, but I feel like it's time to sit in this moment and pray. Will you join me? Okay. Father, thank you for this day, this moment with you. I want to rest here and take in the layers that make up the now with the understanding that moments earlier are part of the unchangeable past and what waits ahead is impermanent and subject to change. So my focus should be on what's in front of me and who I am right now with you. When I rest in you, there's no choice to embrace fear, worry, doubt, or to entertain the ideas that would cause me to stress and not trust your promises. What should be most important to me is my relationship with you and the time I invest with you. There is no better teacher, listener, or he and healer. When I'm feeling lack, it's because I'm trying to go at things solo and I'm not leaning on and embracing you. I'm not trusting you to provide, protect, secure, and be everything that I need. I keep desperately seeking out other sources and trying to be for myself what only you can. I'm tired because I keep chasing the version of myself from my past while also trying to chase down me of the future all while running from your guidance and reassurance. Father, help me to exhale, let go, and be free in your capable hands. Help me to reprogram or discard the old toxic tapes that keep running on a loop in my mind. I hear you, Father. I feel you. Thank you for loving me patiently. Thank you for waiting for me. Amen. And with that, family, I pray that you are blessed, that you see and embrace your blessings, and that you are a blessing to others. I love you. Hi, family. If what I shared in today's message resonates with you, I hope you will share it with others. Feel free to leave positive comments and reviews on my site, breakingbreadwithnatasha.com and through whichever podcast provider that you're listening to me. Each day, I work to be a better steward and servant. I hope you will join me in sharing God's love and truth and rebuking the enemy's lies. Now go out there and make today an awesome day. I love you all.